Hello. Welcome. Okay, so it's seven o'clock. Um, we're just gonna start. Hi to anybody who's there watching. Um, so we're gonna learn how to paint a koi fish. And um, so first, uh, get out your pencil. And what I did was I just taped off a border, but you don't have to do that. Um, I've got a watercolor paper and I'm gonna be using some acrylics. And uh, feel free to use whatever you have, but that's what I'm using. All right, <clears throat> so um, you can paint like one koi fish, two koi fish, a bazillion koi fish. I'm just gonna do one. Um, so I'm gonna map it out first. Um, I'll put the head right over here. I don't know if you can see, yeah, you can see. And then you wanna put kind of where the tail and the, um, the body kind of connect. You want to mark that off so you're left with two circles all right so you want to connect those circles kind of um, make it a curve you know as a, as a fish shape would be so you end up looking with something you know a little phallic but we're going to change that in a second uh, so you put you put your tail on you know as a fish tail looks and it's it's okay if you don't you know it's not perfect you can change it later so what I'll probably want to do is you know, change it a little bit so that it's not as, it's just a little bit more curvy. All right. So once you've mapped out your basic fish shape, we can go ahead and what I like to do is I like to give the, um, the head some lips here because you know how those fish lips are. They're kind of funky looking. Just so that it looks like a fish kind of sooner rather than later. Um, and you want to put some some fins. So if you can see, it's kind of, <laughs> it's kind of taking shape. I'm just reading some comments and stuff. Hello, Shannon, Evan, Jinko, Will, hello. Um, can you guys hear me? I hope you guys can hear me okay. Um, all right, so moving on, more art. We're gonna, we're gonna to wanna to put where the center of the fish is, just, just so that we can also put his little mohawk or whatever those things are. The top fin, I know they're not mohawks, but they're. Okay, and then um, we can put some little whiskers on the guy. And again, if it's not perfect, that's fine. We're just kind of mapping out where we wanna put it. We're gonna be painting it soon. So um, all these lines will probably be shifted around or gone or whatever. So you have the, the two fins in the front and I think there are like a couple more fins down here. And just map out where they are. And give this guy some eyes. Ooh, mine looks kind of mean. That's okay. You can be angry. All right. So once you have that, I know, uh, we said get out your eraser and so let's get rid of some of the marks that we know we're not going to need. Like this nonsense right here can go. And if you want to do a better job at your tail like, like I might want to, you can even just erase a chunk. All right. There is the cutie. Okay, so, um, you know, what else I'd like to add is, let's go ahead and add some uh, lily pads. I'll add one in the top, uh, you know, they have those little, you know, chunks taken out of them sometimes. And you're probably gonna wanna make some sort of like stem thingy. Again, it's just mapping it out. I'll put another one maybe over here. You can have little chunks taken out of them too. 
something like that. All right, so if you had just joined us, we are kind of just mapping out where our fish is going. And um, as you can see, he's just one fish. He's a lonely little guy, but you're welcome to add some, some friends for him. Uh, you know, if you feel like it. I'm just sticking with this one guy. And we're adding um, lily pads and just mapping out where we want to put them on our painting. Um, this lily pad is going to have a flower. So, let's put that sucker in there. Make as many petals as you want or not, whatever. It's, it's a, kind of a, a rough sketch here at this point. Okay, maybe maybe one more down here. Let's just try to heck of it. There he is. All right. So once you have um, once you have your kind of your map done. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use some paints and paint uh, a wash for the background. And so let's see what colors I'm going to use. I have one of my favorites is this phthalo blue. It's kind of like a, I know my paints look like crap, but it's, it's kind of, uh, it's got a green shade. So, you know, it's nice and watery. So, um, Here's here's what I use for my palette. It's kind of kind of crazy, but you might want to um, I'm going to use something less insane. All right. So of course I've got acrylics going on, and um, and this uh, this paper is watercolor paper, which you know it's it's fine. Um, so when I like to put a wash on, I like to use plenty of water because you can always go back over it later and make it darker. And it gives a nice, um, like, uh, variety, tonal variety. Okay, so I got a crap load of water on my paint. And then just kind of go around the guy. And what's going to happen is your paint's probably going to do that. So just quickly get some more water and just kind of paint over more. Like so. I kind of feel like I'm talking to myself. How's everybody doing? All right. So what we're doing right now is again just called like you know just a wash um, in the background so that we can have kind of a nice start to our water or end depending how far you get. It's it's kind of one of those things where you just stop when you, when you feel like stopping. I think that I'm gonna try to do this for about an hour or so and then kind of see where we end up and you know if you want to like uh, kind of get ahead of the game you can always um, put a little bit less water on your paintbrush for some of the the shadow areas like this, you know. I'm gonna make my stuff not really try this again here. Just a little darker.
And uh, of course you'd want to use more or less your like larger brush for this this part because it'll take a lot less time and um, you know it'll it'll look a lot less uh, brush strokey. And the reason I'm using so much water is because um, again that that tonal variety is really fun that you get from watercolors and acrylics. If you guys are doing oils, then good on you, but um, it's, it's pretty intense stuff, man. So just kind of filling in what I want. And again, I'm using this uh, color called Phthalo, Phthalo uh, Blue. And it's one of my favorite types of blues for sure. And you don't need to worry about being perfect because you're just doing this to have fun, hopefully. That's why I'm doing it. Just make room for your lily pads. So more or less, there's your wash for your background. And you might want to like take a couple minutes just to um, let, it, uh, let it dry if you're using watercolor paper like me. Um, this is not really the correct way to set up watercolor paper. Um, if you really want to do it the right way, you uh, remove this, uh, this piece of paper, this watercolor paper, buy it separately or whatever soak it in water and then put it on a um, like a, a wood board and then tape it down so that when it uh, when it dries I guess it shrinks so it doesn't give you those wavy like you see how I don't know if you can see it's kind of getting all wavy and, and stupid but um, I didn't want to like you know go through the whole rigmarole but if you wanted to do it right that's how you do it right. Okie dokie. So I'm going to move to a smaller brush. So I've got a couple more brushes I like to use, like, um, I guess I have a, what is this, a two and a, a four. So I'm going to go ahead and use my four, which looks like this guy, whatever. And then I'm going to, let's see, what color should we do next? Let's do, we can make um, an orange. So if you have an orange, then you can use it. Uh, but I mean, or you can even just paint your your fish however you want to. Really, uh, you know what? Actually, before we jump into that, I think we should we should map out where we want the um, the fish's marks to go. So, so we know what the heck we're doing. So, like this guy, um, you can really put what you've seen koi fish before. You know. They have like these funky marks on them and stuff. Um, speaking of, I don't know if you've seen this video, but it's like a video of a, a koi fish with a human face. If you um, like Google it, you can find this. Anyway, koi fish with human face. So, make some marks. This is where I'm going to put the orange color uh, that I'm going to use for this fella. You know, like more or less like that. Give them another little thing right there. Okay, so now that we have it mapped out, I always like to know what I'm doing. Well, not always, but it's, it's sometimes fun to know what I'm doing before I do it. So we're gonna get, uh, this is cadmium yellow. Again, my, my paints have, have looked better. Let me put cadmium yellow there. And then what else do I have? 
Okay, cadmium red. So we put some of that. And again, if you have orange, then you know, feel free to use it. I'm just gonna mix my own. Bloop. Okie dokie. So this is this is me mixing. It's a freak show, but okay. So again, use plenty of water because it'll give you a little bit of variety. Just go for it. I'm not even using that much water here. I should use more. And always have a, you know, a, like a paper towel or something on hand, because if if this starts dripping, it's gonna look like crap. So like at this point, you know, you can start see your uh, fishy taking shape. So you might want to like, I don't know, name him so that you get to know him, give him a personality. Mine's name is Josh. He is recently divorced. He is, um, he's got custody of the kids. And, you know, his spawning days are behind him, but he's still having a good time. There he is. Okay. There's Josh. Uh, okay. So let's do, since we have our blue and our yellow out, might as well make a green and do some lily pads, shall we? Okay, so. Yay! Junko says hi. All right. So we're making some green. I'm just using my uh, cadmium yellow and my fata yellow blue. Yeah, I might want to use a bigger brush here. It'll take forever. Again, don't ch don't uh, skimp on the water. Water's your friend, especially when you're painting a picture about water. It just makes sense, you know. And if you're doing this like along with me, I'd love to see a picture uh, either when you're done or um, like whenever.
There we go. So now that that's done, we can uh, maybe put some shading or type of thing on the fish. So uh, let's see. I'm going to use, let's see, I'm going to use one of my favorite colors, uh, dioxazine purple, which is that. It's kind of a darker purple. I like to use it instead of black sometimes, just because it's like super dark, but it's not, you know, not quite black. There. So when you're painting your Josh, you can um, keep in mind that, you know, these, these guys are kind of round or whatever, so they're going to have like shadows along the sides of them. And that'll just give them a little, little bit to mention. There. And just kind of wherever you think that they need, like, <laughs> shit, really. <laughs> you know at this point just kind of do whatever you feel like you've got you've got your you've got your fish happening and you're doing shadows and stuff so I mean hopefully um, hopefully you'll be able to kind of see what's happening and fill in the blanks and if you don't uh, I recommend it's not cheating if you want to do like, if you want to um, have reference photos and if you want to work off of pictures, like actual pictures of lily pads or koi fish or whatever the heck you're doing because um, it's kind of like the best way to learn. So I'm going to do, let's see, I'm going to do that uh, flower right now. So I'm going to use some white. titanium white. I don't know if that really makes a difference, but there's that. Okay. So I'm going to use some of that uh, cadmium red and then mix it with the white and get some nice little pink color. Use from the flower. And like I pop back and forth between the things I'm doing so that I can give uh, certain things time to dry before I paint over it, in case you're wondering. So there's that. And then we can also do some, uh, let's see, I wonder if this would work. I'm going to try something. So like I have this fan brush. a little bit. Oh, that's kind of neat. Okay. So just like kind of fucky feeling. Oh, look. Keep it PG. Okay. Ignore that last part then.
All right, so. We can go in and do some details like, you know, the eyes. We can go in and do some, some parts of this thing. So the fins need a little bit of dimension, I think. So we're going to put some shadows in there too. I'm like, I use my finger sometimes, so. So from here, you know, um, it's all about the details. And oh, I, I probably should uh, also add some, let's see, burnt umber, some brown, because you can't just live off of purple. Maybe you can. Some brown. And when I mix that with the purple, it, it gets like, well, you can see some sort of a uh, nice, rich, like, darker color. And again, it's just a matter of uh, making the fish look rounder so that you just, like, put some gradient to it if you can. So, you know, just kind of do whatever you feel like as far as, uh, you know, the details go and just stop whenever you feel like you want to stop. Um, you can always do also uh, some water ripples. Oh, water ripples. Okay. Yeah. Let's do that. So, let's see. Um, where would we put the ripples? So you don't even know. Maybe they can be... Kind of like generally around. Oh, that one didn't show up. Let's try a darker color. Should put more blue. Alrighty. Thank you. 
So you just, um, let's see, if you want also, you can um, make the background a little bit darker because we started with kind of like a, a light wash. So if you want to uh, play with the, the borders a bit between the fish and the water, make, you know, um, some of it darker, increase the contrast and all that, um, you could do that now. And, you know, like sometimes blue just gets really boring. We can put in uh, some purple. Let's see where my purple go. You need more purple. Here it is. All right. So what the hell? So if we want to do something other than blue, we can always, you know, darken the background with something like purple too. There. So it gives us just like um, a little bit more depth. Another uh, trick that, I mean, you can do, but um, I don't, you know, I'm not like prepared to do this, is uh, with watercolor, if you put uh, salt on it, it makes it look cool. It like separates and does a thing. Try it. So the more, also another thing is the more uh, random you can make things, the better usually. Sometimes when my brain gets kind of lazy, I'll just kind of opt into symmetry. And then things look just a little bit too symmetrical. I don't know. It's just not, eh, I don't know. It doesn't look as good, I think. So when I snap myself out of it, usually... Um, I can start to look at things and um, intentionally make them less symmetrical. Yeah, do the salt thing. Tail needs some help. Let's do something with the tail. Let's make it purple. So there's a fish at the uh, koi fish at the Clackamas Town Center um, that does have an old man face. Just FYI, <coughs> check it out, old man face fish. You gotta see it to believe it.
right, what else we got here? Oh, you guys know what else we got to have to do um, eventually, and that's probably one of the last things we do is uh, if you want to add scales, that's kind of um, a little on the time consuming side, but it's well worth it. All right, so now we can start adding dimension elsewhere, adding some shading and some little variety. Just the spice of life. Only pads have this like weird little lip thing, I think. Well, whatever. If you can like picture what it looks like to for a lily pad, then that's fine. Otherwise, um, like I said, it's not cheating to use. Uh, just to look it up online and say, oh, what what does a lily pad look like, and then it'll show you and and paint that. You know, not everybody has a perfect memory all the time of so um actually one thing here i'll show you here's my secret i map this out first see it's not cheating so i mean that's what i've been kind of looking at as a reference and i just kind of stick it up on my easel see like peekaboo there it is and that's fine See, nobody's mad at me for that.
you can do the shadow also that's underneath the flower while you're at it. Oh, we got another one. Forgot about this one. Where do I see a spot that might need help? So if you're like missing contrast or, you know, there's something that doesn't look right to you, just, just kind of fix it. I'm going to put a little bit of yellow in the middle of my flower. It doesn't even show up. So I'm going to go on. Okay, let's try this. It's all there. And you can always, like, do some things that are kind of like experimental. Um, add some crazy highlights or Josh is looking, he's looking okay. Yes, he is. And if you notice, I'm not using black at all. Um, and I don't really have a super good reason why I don't do that, but um, other than I kind of just want to make sure that uh, my, my stuff stays kind of as colorful as possible. But um, there certainly is no problem if you want to use black for like any type of shadows or like the eyes are a good place to use it. And I like to try to tie things together too. Um, it's kind of what I'm doing right now. I'm bringing two edges kind of together. So they don't look like a bunch of separate entities I just kind of threw on here.
All right, we're coming up at 45 minutes, which means that I think that I should probably choose more or less like the last of the things that I want to do here. Um, so kind of looking, I don't know. I'm going to do some uh, shadows on the lily pads, and maybe I'm going to finish this um, this flower up. So if you want to check out what I have, I have a lot more petals on this flower than I do on this one. So um, you know, I've looked at I've looked at the pictures of these guys, and it can go either way. So I'm just going to start and see what happens.
Do you guys have any questions as I'm wrapping up? Feel free to post them and then I'll answer them or try to. Awesome. Because <laughs> I've got cool friends like you, Joe.
yeah, if you don't have your own paints, like right now, I think that maybe I'll do some more. You can like uh, take your time and prepare and get some stuff. I'll do this again sometime. Yay. I'm glad you're having fun. It's kind of the point. All right, time's kind of up as far as uh, what I plan to do. I have about an hour. It's been about an hour. You see, I could probably do this for quite a while. Um, but there you go. There you have it. That's how to paint a koi fish. Um, and if you've made it this far, let me show you something. Let me show you something. Um, here is what I did yesterday to like. Uh, see if you know what it was like if I were to do this and this is when I did two of them and as you can see they're not they're a little a little bit wacky and but it took me a lot longer just because you know there's two fish and that's why I wanted to do just one fish for you today but as you can see it also is possible to do two fish or three fish or four fish or however many freaking fish you want There he is. Flip back to this thing. Okay. Post your art, artwork if you got it. And thank you. And bye-bye.